So the last the, uh, few Sundays we've been talking about the abundant life and uh, how to have more of that. I think everybody in here could probably use uh, some more spice in their life. You know, when we ask the Lord to come into our life, He gives us life. He gives us God's life. But then Jesus spoke about abundant life in John chapter 10 and verse 10. And I, I think God is, um, I'm pretty sure God is trying to share with us that there's more than dying and going to heaven. That God wants to do a special work in your life, build character and grow your faith and Make it so that your experience is one where you're <clears throat> enjoying the fruits of the Spirit, like love and joy and peace, right? All that's good stuff. And that's, that's part of the abundant life that Jesus promised to give uh, to us as believers. Uh, part of this would look like... Um, you having a calm spirit even in the midst of a storm. Something like that. Um, it might look like somebody slaps you on the cheek and what do you do? You, you knock the goo out of them. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be that, would it? You know, so God has, um, he's got some really special stuff for us in our life to add some real spice to your life, but you kind of have to know what it is and how it works. Um, it's kind of like, you know, just thinking about, you know, eating. You know, who eats chicken fried steak without gravy? <clears throat> you got to have gravy, Brian. You got to have it. Or, uh, you know, who eats dry toast? You're going to want to put some butter on there. And then some grape jelly or strawberry jelly or blackberry and, and, and maybe some honey and, oh, yeah, that, a little spice. Who likes salt? Where's Sheila? There's Sheila. Sheila can't have salt. How difficult it must be. And Sheila was telling me that almost everything we buy on the counter in the grocery store has salt in it, you know? And we think about just adding it, but it already has salt. What does that salt do? Boy, it gives it flavor, doesn't it? The food. It just adds a little spice. Well, this is what God wants to do in your life. He wants to do this in your marriage, your family, um, out there at work or in school. He wants to offer this better life to you. Please know. Not all Christians are experiencing the abundant life that Jesus promised. You can be a believer and not experience the Christian life in the abundance that God offers. Uh, here's an illustration of what happens to all of us at times. Um, over here in uh, Luke chapter 13, preached on this years ago, but I just wanted to give just a just use it as an illustration, not really as the sermon text. Verse 10, now Jesus was teaching one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. So everybody's at church. Behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. She's in a bad plight, bad situation. Can't even raise up, bent over. God, terrible. 18 years, that's a long time. But she came to church. And when Jesus saw her, he called to her, her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Wow. I mean, so everybody's just going, this is awesome. Well, not everybody. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath and he said to the crowd there are six days on which men ought to work therefore come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day it's just shocking isn't it 
Here, this lady, this poor lady, she's been this way for 18 years. This guy knows her. She's been doing this for a long time. This is not her first time at church. He knows who she is. He knows her problem. Jesus heals her, and he's mad that she got healed on the Sabbath. Now, it's a lot of reasons for it, but one of them was because he was caught up in his tradition. And so he's made a judgment call. That's what he's done. And he said, this is the way it's supposed to work. And he's based that not on the word of God, but on his tradition. The Lord says to him, hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? And this was a rhetorical question, this analogy from lesser to the greater. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. Wow, it's just unbelievable this guy got so mad, so angry, and really and truly the one that's been out of shape in the story is who? It's the Pharisee. It's the ruler of the synagogue. Have you ever been bent out of shape? You know, some of you are laughing. I wonder why. Some of you weren't laughing. Does that mean that only part of us are in this group? or oh, All of us, right? We have all been bent out of shape at times. Maybe even last week. It happens. You know, we're human beings, right? So we got this problem and um, call sin. And, and so that's what we're trying to deal with. And that's what we're trying to overcome, not that we ever do it perfectly, because that won't happen until we die and go to heaven, but we've got to deal with sin in our Christian lives until we die. So sanctification, there's a big word, it just means that we, God has given us as Christians power over sin. That doesn't mean we always exercise that power, that's what we're talking about today, now, when we die and we go to heaven, that would be another big word, glorification, which means we are delivered from the presence of sin. So when we go to heaven to be with the Lord, no more sin to deal with. But God has left sin here on this planet and somewhere incarnate in your life. We call it the flesh because he has a purpose. You see, God wants us to make choices where we trust in him and depend upon him for what he's provided. So God didn't make us to be robots and mechanical. And he wants us to exercise faith in him. And when we learn the proper way to do that, um, we'll, we won't get so bent out of the shape uh, so often. Okay? The, the idea here is, is that it will happen less and less and less, and we'll become more mature, and we won't have these knee-jerk reactions. But in fact, we'll have calm waters. We want to get to the place where we grow so much in, our Lord, in the Lord, we have calm waters even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of a loss or when people don't treat us very nice. We still have our emotions are just, they've just laid down, see? Instead of flaring up, instead of raising their ugly head. Okay, now, some of you here were last Sunday, and uh, the crummy thing about being a preacher is about having to tell on yourself and how you fail. You're telling everybody what to do that's right, and yet you just did it wrong, right? I mean, that's humbling. That's no fun, in case you're wondering, okay? But it is helpful. And we do have value in our failures and our mistakes if we can learn from them, right? Because, you know, when I fail, I go, okay, now I think even God is teaching me through that. Now I think I see a little more clearly okay 
And I think I have uh, since my last little failure. And uh, um, so I, I, when I'm talking to you all about all this stuff, I'm, I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you. I'm, I'm learning all this stuff too. And I'm trying to share with you, I'm going to share with you today, a couple little um, practical things that I do that I think has really helped me to have results in what we're talking about, the abundant life, calm waters, not emotions that are inflamed, even when things go awry, okay? So y'all remember there was this cute little couple going to Hawaii <laughs> to see their son. So they get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to catch the 6 o'clock flight in San Antonio to go to LAX have an hour layover, catch the flight at LAX at 8 o'clock to be in Hawaii at 11 o'clock, be on the beach 11.30. Okay? They get on the plane at LAX. Everything's great till we get to LAX. We get on the plane in LA, LAX, fill the whole thing up, lock the doors, and the pilot immediately comes on, and he said, everyone needs to get off the plane. This plane is not certified to go over water. I got my tickets out. I said, yeah, we're going to Hawaii. That, that's over water. Someone didn't get the memo. Now, I didn't really say anything more, but inside I'm churning a little bit. Just, just just a touch, okay? I'm like, I'm a little bothered. So I'm trying to say, I'm not having calm waters. It's a, it's a little choppy, okay? Just a little bit. So we get off the plane, we get in there. He says, don't worry, we'll be gone in about an hour and a half. So 9.30 comes, we get a text. Now it's at 11, now it's at 12, now it's at 1, now it's at 2, now it's at 3. The waters are a little choppier. So much so that Allison decided to take a picture of me in the airport. And here it is. <laughs> Does that look like a man on his way to Hawaii? <laughs> Does that look like a man who is ready to witness to people? Who, who is thanking the Lord for, how many times have I told y'all this? We're supposed to thank God in everything and for everything. Have y'all ever heard that from me before? Uh, Psalm 150, and everything give what? Praise to the Lord. Does that look like Kim there? Now, I'm not really saying anything out loud, but inside, I'm complaining. Okay? I'm complaining. I don't like, you know what I, you know what a complaint is? We went over this last Sunday. This is reviewed for some of, some of y'all, but some of you weren't here. Remember, complaining is saying, God, I don't like the way you're treating me. Because the Lord is the one who ordains our environment. And I have a feeling this entire episode with uh, 350 people that were on that plane was all for my benefit. Okay, now Allison, what is she doing? Unfortunately, she's the spiritual leader in our family. <laughs> she's going all around the airport making friends. She's Little Miss Sunshine. She's so happy. She's like a little flower. And everyone just loves her. When we finally get to Hawaii and we put all our baggage up, get her baggage, 50 people come over to her and say, it was so nice to meet you, Allison. Not one person came over to me <laughs> and said, boo. <laughs> so we have, I have a problem. Now, I recognize, because I listen to my preaching every once in a while, I recognize that I could get glad the same way I got mad. And I recognize that I was feeling the way I did because I had inner conflict. 
And the reason I'd enter conflict is because I had sin in my life. Because I made a bad choice. I made a choice to complain and not be thankful. And so God was saying, hello down there. Mike, would you like to make a different decision? Well, it took about five or six hours. <laughs> Finally, after three o'clock, I said, okay, I give up, Lord. That's a good, that's a good thing to do. Lord, I give up on myself, okay? Because Mike isn't going to be able to do it. I need the Lord. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry for complaining. I'm sorry for not thanking you. Now, Lord, would you restore my peace to me? Because I'm fine with everything now. If you want us to wait here two more weeks, it's okay. I said that prayer, and I mean immediately, here's what happened. <laughs> Same guy, but different stuff going on in the inside, okay? Now, by the way, um, we counted, I think her phone said we walked nine and a half miles that day in the airport. Uh, by the way, it was 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 8.30 before we left. So we arrived about, about 9 o'clock uh, that night, Hawaii time, and we had a wonderful time. But I, I learned some things that day, and I learned some, some things since that day. So let me share with you, okay, because I just got a few minutes here to do this with you. <clears throat> Several things we want to... Um, understand and implement. And before we can do right, we must be right. So we have the substitutionary life. We have the substitutionary life. Then we have consecration. So we substitute, then we consecrate. Then we're able to solve problems. Solving problems, which we'll get to another day, will involve restoration. Okay? So that, that'll be another day. But before we can do right, first we must be right. So the substitutionary life, a big word, consecration, another big word. But I'm telling you, God makes it simple for us to be able to live the Christian life so that we can enjoy the abundant life. You do not have to be a theologian, okay? But you do have to break down some abstract thoughts. You know, putting butter on your bread and jelly, adding a little spice on your, on your toast is something all of us can do. It's so easy. It's so concrete. But some things in the Bible are abstract. And so we kind of have to break it down. Now, two things here in breaking it down. There's the macro, and then there's the micro. So the macro, Galatians 2 in verse 20, it is not I that live, but Christ who lives in me. And now I live that life by faith, okay? So you're, you're this human being, you're this person with all the stuff that you've got in your life. Now, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So what we want to do is we want to trust in the Lord to live the Christian life. We want him to live the Christian life in us and through us, and he will do that by faith. So in the morning, I'm going to have my prayer time so I can use it all day long, okay? I'm going to say something like this. We've been through this many times with many of you, so I hope many of you are doing this. Lord Jesus, I trust you to live in my place. Substitute your life for my life, okay? Remember, he substituted his life in death on the cross so I could be forgiven for my sins. But he will substitute, he, he will, you have to ask him, okay? He will substitute his life in your, pli in your place in life to deliver you from your sins. See, we have forgiveness in his death we have deliverance in his life. 
deliverance from the power of sin, okay? So, all that theology works like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I trust you to live in my place today. Live your life through me. See that? Now, now I'm in the right position. That's the macro, okay? That's the substitutionary life. So I'm trusting in him. I'm not trusting in Mike, okay? I'm not trusting in my denomination. I'm trusting in the person, the resurrected Christ, to live in my place, to, to, to live the Christian life inside of me and through me. See I, want, see, I want Christ to come through my life to others. That's what 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 means when it says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We want the treasure to come out, but he can't come out unless first we exercise faith in his person and his delivering deliverance work. Okay? Okay, so it's that simple. Lord Jesus, I trust you to live in my place, to live in my life and through my life. Express your life to others. Okay? That's number one. Number two, the micro. Now, this is a little bit more, okay? So, we have a sum that is made up of parts. When the Lord is living in our place, he now wants to govern and influence and lead each of our parts. So we must deal with each one of them specifically. Now, here's some abstract for you, okay? Um, in Romans chapter 6, the Apostle Paul writes, Know that you're dead to sin and reckon yourself dead to sin. What does that mean? I mean, it, it's just like, how do you wrap your head around that? Okay? We know that we're dead to sin, but yet Christians still sin. What is it that God wants me to do? What does that mean to know that I'm dead to sin and then reckon myself dead to sin? He tells us, I think, he answers that question in verse 13 of chapter 6 in Romans. And here's what God just basically says in a little summary. God says, to know and to reckon is to consecrate. To know and to reckon is to offer up. Okay? Now, what is it that God wants you to offer up? What is it that he wants you to yield? What is it that he wants you to consecrate, to dedicate to him? Your parts. Okay? Now, what are your parts? You got your mind, right? You got your will, and you got your emotions, now, your emotions, what do you got involved there? You got feelings. Does anybody have any of those? <laughs> what else do you have? You have desires and you have affection, your love, okay? And then you have your body, okay? So you have your body, you have your emotions, you have your mind. And you have your will. Those are the parts. Now, you have one other part, which is your spirit. Okay? <clears throat> With a little s. So when you ask Jesus to come into your life, big S, the Holy Spirit, he brought Jesus to your life through your spirit. So God's spirit joined with big S, joined with a little s, so now God's spirit resides in your spirit. So when you ask the Lord to come into your life, God did not come into your big toe. Okay? He came into your spirit. Now, the goal is not just to take you to heaven. The goal is so that the Holy Spirit in your spirit would govern the macro, which includes the micro. God wants to influence. He wants to lead. He wants to govern your 
thoughts. Now, what's involved in your thoughts? How about your opinions? I mean, have you ever been bent out of shape just over your opinion? You know? You ever got like in a political debate with someone and you had your opinion about it and they didn't see the way you saw and so you got bent out of shape and sometimes you're not even friends anymore. Sometimes you just, you just cut off all communication, all because of an opinion. God wants to govern your opinions. By the way, have you ever had an opinion where you thought you were right and later on you found out you were wrong? How do you know you're right now? Your thoughts. Um, your will. Faith operates primarily in your will through the choices that you make. God wants to govern your will in such a way that your will is not stubborn but submissive. The Lord's Prayer Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants to use your will to do his will. Our mind, our will, our emotions. Our emotions. Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. God wants all of your love every bit of it he's not interested in you sharing he's interested in you offering all of your affection for him and him only you say well but the bible says love your wives and your children and love others and even love your own enemies yes but all of that human love flows out of the agape love that you have for him the first love. Remember, um, John in Revelation chapter 3 wrote the church at Ephesus, and he said, here's what I have against you guys. You lost your first love. You see, we have a tendency sometimes to want to put others above the Lord. No. All of our love for our wives, our children, our parents, those in the church, uh, for everyone should always flow out of our love for the Lord. So, consecration is what is needed in order to be right, to do right. So, I found something that's been a little helpful for me, maybe it'll be helpful for you, and this is how I broke, it, broke the abstract down for my life, okay? So, my morning time, my quiet time, I say, Lord, this morning, for today, I want you to know that I'm offering you all my thoughts and all my opinions. I'm yielding to you my will, my will to do your will, my mind to, to align with Scripture and to reject anything that isn't contrary to that. I yield to you my will to do your will, not my will when it's in conflict with yours. I choose today to offer up my emotions, my feelings, my desires, and all of my love. And Lord, I dedicate, I offer my body to be used for you. Okay? Now, so I do that. Just a few minutes left, and here's what happens. So I'm going about my day, and I'm driving down the road. This is for the men. I'm going to get to the women in a second. <laughs> so I'm driving down the road, and there's a billboard with some woman in her bathing suit. And I look over there, and this thought comes in my brain. I can't stop this thought. That's a beautiful woman. Now, my next thought should be, I'm not looking back at that woman because Allison will kill me. <laughs> no. My next thought, I see her, okay. 
My next thought is, well, look, look again. You, you need to take a closer look. And, but, but no, here's what happens. I'm telling you, this works, man. No, I can't look back at that woman because this morning I already gave all my affection and my desires to the Lord. I'm not looking. And then you could say, besides that, you know, Allison would kill me, you know. <laughs> okay? Is that breaking it down for you? Okay? Now, let's get to the women. Remember last Sunday, what did we talk about? Hurt feelings. So now we know where hurt feelings come from, don't we? Our husbands do something, say something, don't do something, don't say something, and we get our feelings hurt. Why did we get our feelings hurt? Remember last week? Because we made a judgment call. We had to judge our husbands unrighteously. We had to say, well, who made him in charge? Who does he think he is? He didn't even think about me. He forgot my fill in the blank. Right? And we get hurt feelings. Well, we say, no. He does whatever. We're tempted to make the judgment call, and we say, but no. I offered my feelings to the Lord today, my desires and all my love. I gave my will. I gave my mind and all my thoughts to the Lord. I am not going to judge my husband because Romans chapter 2 says, who made you the judge? No, I'm going to receive my husband and I'm just going to reject his ungodly conduct. See how that works? And I'm telling you, it works. And here's what happens. Nothing changed in your life outside. It's the same old, same old. What changed was on the inside. And those old turbulent waters came by your way just like they always did. But this time, you made the right choice. And you got calm water. And you're not bent out of shape. Who wants to be like that? Man, add some spice to your life. This is the way to go. Let's pray. <clears throat> so let me just give you a moment just to pray about your own life. Maybe, maybe you need to get glad the same way you got mad this morning, just like I did. And I'll need to in the future. We're not perfect. Oh, but listen, God has a better plan so that this can be your experience more often. That's where we want to go. So let me just give you a moment or two to pray. And maybe while you're doing that, is there anyone here who needs to stand and come forward and make some kind of public decision or just a visit or pray or whatever. I'll be standing here for just a moment. There's somebody who needs to join the church or follow the Lord in baptism or whatever it is. We'll give you just a couple minutes while the rest of us are praying. Just stand up and come.